such a coordination of the association, in particular for freedom of religion, with uh, human rights without frontier. So I will give the floor to uh, the Dr. Philip Manek, the Master of Psychology, Christina Tomanova, the Master of Psychology, Martin Bretra, and the Director of the Human Rights Without Frontier on the Condition of Detention and Extradition in Mania. So first, I give the floor to the Dr. Philip Manek. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Let me introduce you the philosopher, spiritual teacher, artist and writer, Mr. Jaroslav Dobes, also well known as Guru Yara, who for 25 years old uh, long journey inspired and influenced uh, thousands of followers all over the world. My name is uh, Philip Manek. In civil life, I'm a doctor of science, and I'm a student and friend for 20 years. Jaroslav Dobes was born in 1971 in former communist Czechoslovakia. And when he was 18, he considered that uh, living in uh, uh, atheistic society doesn't fit him, and decided to leave and escape for freedom to Italy. His destination was Rome and Vatican, when he studied the Christian Holy Scriptures with Catholic monks. In the next few years, his quest, spiritual quest led him to India, Himalayas, and Egypt, to, to meet his teachers. And after years of intensive study and practicing their teaching, he achieved a high state and initiations. In 1995, he returns back to Czech Republic to share his spiritual experiences. His group rapidly grew and expand all over the country. He organized hundreds of seminars, public teachings, <coughs> and spiritual festivals all over the country. I have to mention that his followers and students were mostly highly educated uh, people, such as uh, engineers, businessmen, scientists, judges, and university professors. In 1999, he organized the first spiritual seminars in Mindoro in Philippines. Around the year 2000, his activities were noticed by anti-cult movements, and they marked him as the fastest growing alternative movement in Czech Republic. Around the year 2004, he helped to uplift the lives of thousands of followers, and their numbers was growing. So he uh, decided to found the Esoteric Institute of Poetry to teach a spiritual discipline such as meditation, yoga, astrology and feng shui and etc. From that time, he starts to focus more on uh, students from abroad and spend most of the time in foreign countries. Around the year 2005 in Czech Republic, the religious tolerance of the public decreased very significantly from the period of President Havel in the 90s. The media don't inform about the spiritual activities anymore. The attempt of the group to register a religious foundation is rejected. The monastery in Beskidi Mountains is set to fire, an identified uh, person. And there was also two serious attempts at physical harm of Yaroslav Dobesh. In, in 2007, the situation went so far that Yaroslav Dobesh and Barbara Plashkova decided to leave permanently Czech Republic because they feel threatened. At that time, no charges are filed against them yet. They focus mainly on the work with foreign students and on the art. Poetry Institute continue to grow and teach without the significant changes. In years 2007 and 2008, they lived in Nepal when the <coughs> mountains uh, Yaroslav Dobes created his famous teaching of uh, spiritual trekking. And due to the worsening political situation in Nepal, they moved to Thailand. In the February 2009, they moved permanently to Philippines, where they searched the country with, uh, to allow the open, open uh, following the faith and spiritual practice. Back in Czech Republic, the former lecturers apostates with Czech anti cult movement start to smear media campaign. The reputation of our teachers suffers, the students start to leave, 
and the Poetry Institute is forced to close. From this point until the imprisonment of Jaroslav Dobesh, the process very remarkably reminds the story of other organizations around the world, according to Fekri's scenario. The situation cum culminates in October 2010, when the armed secret police units raided the homes of female lecturers. Jaroslav Dobesh and Barbara Pashkova were absurdly accused, and massive slanderous campaign started and completely devastates their reputation and reduces the number of the followers to minimum. In 2010, this is a totally new situation for Jaroslav Dobesh and uh, his whole group. Jaroslav Dobesh himself comments this affair like something like this to someone who lived in the Czech Republic during the time of President Havel. They couldn't imagine it. He worked with the Japanese and Americans very hard, and he relied on the legal system to solve the situation. There was no reason to worry about the propaganda. Spiritually oriented and educated followers are shocked because they are viewed as criminals and they decided to defend and show uh, who their teacher really are he, uh, and organize a spiritual exhibition of the teaching and art as a form of support to, and to identify <coughs> themselves. They register their religious society called Pass of Guru Yara. On the other side of the world, Jaroslav Dobesh found his new ashram and community in Shargao Island in the Philippines. <coughs> his teaching is based on individual spiritual past and fulfilling one's life mission. He organizes international seminars that attract followers from all around the world, mainly from Japan, United States, Russia, and other countries as well. His ashram is growing and he's always full of students searching for a peaceful place to practice their faith. That time also uh, gave a period for developing of his teachings. Through the books, arts, and spiritual, uh, spiritual curses, he continued to expand his global influence. He also presents fully his Arctic work for photo collages and gained success at international exhibitions in Stockholm, Athens, Moscow, or Tokyo. He is very popular and respected among the local people. He supports uh, local societies, local cultural events and hospital. And around that year, 2011, he also meets his current Filipino partner with whom he has a five-year-old daughter now. In 2014, the prefabricated trial is taking place in Czech Republic which uh, results in sentence for 10 years of imprisonment. On 15th of May, Jaroslav Dobesh is apprehended in his ashram during the morning meditation under the tree and was transported to detention camp in Manila. <coughs> Just a few days later, the sentence is completely annulled of, by Supreme Court. His foreigner followers, they remember who their teacher really is and what he did for them, and as a form of support, they decided to, f to register. register their movements, and uh, the church, the path of Guru Yara, was registered in United States and Philippines. F in uh, 2017, despite of the heart condition, serious health problems, and two years spent in detention, Jaroslav Dobesh still continued to fulfill his life mission in detention. He's very popular there. He teaches and helps the people around, and he continues to write the books. <coughs> he finished his seventh book written in detention now, which is his 21st book in total. And due to his stay in detention, his church, ashram, disciples, and family significantly suffers. Considering the presumption of innocence, such a unique person could use his creative potential much more in normal conditions. Individual spiritual approach and leadership has a tradition in Czech Republic, but also most of the mystics there were mis misunderstood. Such persecution has never happened. Due to the practice used, we, see the, uh, we have a serious concern about his life. 
in the Czech Republic there is neither protection nor tolerance to guarantee him and uh, his view as a degrade, in a degrading way. Uh, see, since uh, his uh, long-term stay in the Philippines and uh, already established uh, live homes and uh, ashrams, we dare to suggest and ask for granting asylum for him in this country. At the very final, let me play you two minutes of, his, uh, of the trailer from the new upcoming documentary movie about Guru Yara. Yes, it's coming. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you for your presentation, but maybe you have the time for the situation. So now I give the floor to the Minister of Security, Christina Tovanova. Hello, my name is Kristina Tomanova. I am a sister of Barbara Pláškova, uh, who is the second detainee in the Bagongiva camp and is the uh, right hand of Master Jaroslav Dobesh Gurujana. So I will just briefly, briefly tell you something about my sister and how she is connected to the whole story. Uh, from my perspective, my sister is one of the most self-sacrificing person I know. And I know I'm not just talking for myself. I know a lot of people who think the same. And they, would, they might be here even in the future. Barbara is a teacher. She graduated from the 
Faculty of Philosophy, and she uh, has her examination in literature and Czech and English language, as well as pedagogy and psychology. <coughs> she had very, uh, very great relationships. She had money. She should have been satisfied, but she wasn't. She still was missing something in her relationship or in the life that didn't fulfill her. So she often asked herself a question, why am I not happy? I have everything the society tells me I should want, but something is still missing. There must be something bigger, more fulfilling for me, something more unique, genuine, honest. Then, a few years later, uh, through my mother, who got to know Master Jaroslav Dobesh Guru Yara, she met him and her answers were answered completely. She could see his example. He, she could see how he lived, how he fulfilled his dreams, and he set a great example. So she just witnessed the model of his genuine and unique life. She she saw this is what she really wanted. And because she's a loving per person, she wanted the same for everybody else. So she set on a mission. She had two main goals. The goals were to reach enlightenment for herself, because since then, she could see this is the only thing that mattered to her, and to make Yara's teaching famous, that he can inspire other spiritual seekers like herself and lead them to their own enlightenment. These were her goals. <coughs> she felt that after the 40 years of communism, communism Guru Yara was a really revolutionary, inspirational, and a necessary personality for the Czech society. Her journey was really fulfilling and full of work and passion. She, she wanted everybody in the Czech Republic to know him and to know his teaching and benefit from it. So she organized massive sold out workshop, workshops and seminars for him all around the Czech Republic. Her first goal was actually fulfilled. She published his teachings into beautiful books. She also was an editor and uh, she helped with the printing a lot. So on her own agenda, there are 17 books which are already printed and uh, half of them are sold out already. She built a very popular and very successful spiritual institute in the Czech Republic to, together with Master Jaroslav Dobesh. <coughs> it was called Poetrie, as you have already heard from my colleague, and it was the instrument that spread the teaching. During the years, she traveled also to many religious places, monasteries throughout Europe, Asia, and other countries, such as Nepal, Egypt, India, Thailand, Himalayas, Vietnam, Indonesia, and of course, the Philippines. She built an ashram in the Philippines from scratch. There was just a forest, a lot of trees, snakes, and beautiful nature and countryside. Since then, she has been also running it. She reached her enlightenment in October 2010 with the help of Guru Yara's guidance. It was 14 years after their first meeting. That means that her second goal was also fulfilled. She became a respected guru herself and she officially, as you have also heard, co-founded the Path of Guru Yara, religious society in the Philippines that is registered there. In 2009, the Master and Barbara visited the Philippines. They wanted to find a place for an ashram, monastery, or a spiritual center. Their vision, endeavor, helped them build in a beautiful location in the middle of the forest on the shores of the Pacific Ocean, a beautiful center, which is visited by students and spiritual seekers from all over the world, like Japan, 
you could see it in the video, the USA and Europe. The ashram, as I have already said, was literally built from scratch and it is still growing. What is very important is that they also employed a lot of local people. They loved them very dearly as well and they still work for them. They gave them jobs, hospitality. They sponsored and supported a lot of number and a lot of uh, activities such as hospital, school, tourism, because a lot of people started coming to Shargao, sporting competitions, and they even helped to overcome the damages, damages caused by a hurricane. Because of this spiritual center, which is something like, uh, like a child, she put her blood, sweat, and tears into. Shargao and Barbara feels there as ho at home. So Shargao and the, and the center is her home now. And the local community, which Guru Yara still continues to sponsor, is like her family. This, this is my sister <coughs> working with Filipino people, building the <coughs> ashram from scratch. These are, these are a few photographs of the ashram and the activities there. You can see it is a beautiful place. After she became a guru at her age of 40, she also gave a birth to her first child, a son named Bono, in the ashram. Although she regularly traveled to Surigao to extend her visa every two months, on her last visit she was told that her passport has been revoked and she was arrested. She was a breastfeeding mother of a 10-month-old child. We now already know that the passport was revoked illegally by Czech government. Her son was 10 months old, as I have said, and she was breastfeeding him. <coughs> they have not seen each other for more than two years now. She hasn't seen him, he hasn't seen her because Czech authorities arrested Barbara for a crime which they had fabricated. The verdict has been rightfully repealed due to the lack of evidence, I have to repeat. It's a too long year period. Me as a sister and a psychologist as well have to say that this is, or as you probably know as well, that these first years of child's life are the most crucial life. Uh, years and two years of them are already gone. So she has been robbed of two years with her son. What is more, she is a single mother and now because she's in the detec detention for two years, she has to rely on the ashram staff to take care of her son. You all also know that the ashram doesn't have the masters now, so it's also quite suffering financially. So she cannot even provide for her son, as well as Master Jaroslav Dobesh cannot provide for his family. So it is a very dreadful situation. Her two-year-old boy, called Bono, suffers immensely. He misses his mother, and he is raised by being shuffled between available staff members. Czech authorities never shown any concern for what will happen to her little son, who will take care of him, <clears throat> and they continue to show her that they are not going to help her in this desperate situation. As I have already said, they have been robbed for two long years, and now it's even more. Or this time they will never get back. His two words on the phone last week were, Mommy, come. So this is a photo of my sister with her baby. And this is he now. She didn't see him walk. She didn't see how he said his first words. And she couldn't 
even celebrate one birthday with him. She will be three years old now. He, sorry, he will be three years old. Besides this dreadful <coughs> pain, Barbara's health has gravely suffered in the detention. She has had stomach ulcers, gallbladder stones, inflammation of her uterus after the C-section. She has fainted several times. She's nauseous. There was even an attempt for poisoning. She has tonsillitis and never-ending flus all the time. There is zero medical aid in the detention in Bagong Diva. They only treat everything with water and salt. I cannot even imagine what would happen to my family and her son if she dies there. And it's not impossible. These are the rights <coughs> that were violated in the case of my sister. First of all, it is a human and basic right to protect the family and parenthood. Also, Geneva Conventions were violated because the Czech Embassy has been interfering in the asylum proceedings. What's more, there were also attempts to kidnap Master Guru Yara, Jaroslav Dobesh, and she was supposed to be the next on the list. These are all the rights that were violated. Czech authorities refuse to take any action and because they have done uh, and they have made a lot of errors, they have to face or they have to save their face in the violation of human rights. You, you must understand my parents are totally devastated by the situation. <coughs> so that is why we have an urgent plea an out, for an outside country to help us. This is a critical situation for my sister's survival and her sons as well. Even our lawyers have warned us that if they come back to the Czech Republic, they will be eliminated. I believe the Czech party will be forced to answer for its actions. However, realistically, this, take, this may take, and it has already taken, very long time. Therefore, we kindly request the Philippines for the protection of Barbara Plaskova and her son Bono, effective immediately. Please grant them religious asylum for all of them, including Master Jaroslav Dobesh. You have the power and opportunity to uphold and respect these human rights as an independent nation outside of Europe. Please grant my beloved sister and her son asylum Protect her human rights, do the right thing. We will be forever grateful. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Christina. Thank you, Thank you. very much. So now I give the floor to the Master of Psychology, Martin Kripa. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Martin Krajcza. I'm my professional psychologist, and I'm student for Guru Yara and his teaching and his believer for 20 years already. And I will be speaking about the legal situation about Guru Yara and Barbara Plaskova, which brings situation to this point, this uh, temporary situation. And as it's kind of long story already, I will try to make it clear as much as possible and make it short because it would be possible to talk it much longer than we got the space here. Uh, here is just the content of this presentation as also we can highlight some key present or present events. Uh, when the Yaroslav Dobesh and Barbara Plaskova was the first unwanted list on the Czech police, and when the secret Czech police U.S. investigation and <laughs> issuing of the international arrest warrant was engaged. We also focus on the trial in the Czech Republic 
in the year 2014, the arrest of the Barbara Blasco and Yaroslav Tobesh in the Philippines, as you heard already, and the asylum application intervention of the Czech embassy in Manila, which happened in the year 2015, and uh, when the high court in Olomouc cancels the prison term for both of them. And uh, I also would like to comment the attempt to forcibly deport of Jaroslav Tobesh back to the Czech Republic. Well, how they both, these exceptional spiritual teachers, uh, were issued on the wanted list of the Czech police is uh, for the Czech country, for the Czech people, somehow misunderstood because the media speak in their own way about the whole story. So these are, these are actual factual information. And uh, the, the issue on the vented list to Guru Yara <laughs> was actually because the Czech police didn't know his whereabouts in May 2007. Because there was some complaint from one girl that he doesn't look as a proper tantric teacher. Uh, Barbara Plaskova gave explanation about the issue to the local police and they were actually satisfied with that and they said to, to her that it's actually nonsense and that there is no Czech law violated and they will probably just dissolve it. But as it was important <coughs> to allow also Jaroslav Dobesh to speak about the case and they didn't find him, they had to search him. and. That's why they put it on the warrant list. Uh, meanwhile, as you already know, the Yaroslav Dobesh and also Barbara Plaskova moved to the Asia. And on February 2009, uh, they already settled down at the Philippines. And in October 2009, Barbara Plaskova was put on the wanted list of the Czech police because they again didn't know their whereabouts and this was much connected with following uh, case about some slanders back in the Czech Republic as you will see it in forthcoming slide. And this was not against anything special, anything, anything wrong because uh, meanwhile in the Czech Republic as uh, Guru Yara prepared the poetry school to be independent on him or Barbara Plaskova and gave the power and also the responsibilities to the long-term um, lectures and also his spiritual student. But uh, in 2008, some anti-campaign against Jaroslav Dobesh and Barbara Plaskova was started by former lectures of their own movement with connection with the Czech anti-sect movement. It's necessary to say that uh, the, the anti-campaign would never be such strong if they would not be connected to the Czech anti-sect movement who already make the public opinion prepared on both of them and the new religious movement in the Czech Republic. And therefore, uh, the poetry school was forced to close in 2008. However, in January 2010, the Special Police Unit for Combating Organized Crime and Mafia, UOZ, became officially involved in the examination and destroying of the dangerous group. We don't know how actually the, the case arises from just slanders and some anti czech cult movement activities, to the, this special and secret, very, very elite unit, um, which doesn't exist anymore in the Czech Republic because it, they were dissolved because enormous errors and scandals and, and uh, things like that. But nevertheless, we don't know what was the story about because it's secret police. Anyway, the secret secret police U.S. investigation. Uh, was very vast and very, very massive. They, uh, they questioned over 400 students and members and lecturers who stayed in the poetry school. And in October 2010, there was a 
massive police raid uh, on how searches took place uh, during the police discovered that Tobes and Plasqua were living in the Philippines already. Uh, actually, few, few witness of this very hard uh, police raid are sitting here in this room today, so you can question on the issue later and how very bad situation it was and how humiliating experience it was. Uh, and also it was very destroying for our movement uh, in practical way because all funds were confiscated, around 215,000 euros, and computers and also religious items and many more things. Uh, the UOZ criminal unit tried to issue human trafficking uh, charges against Guru Yara, which they publicly medicalized, and it was very well known in the Czech Republic that Guru Yara made human trafficking. Nevertheless, there was not even any court yet. And uh, actually, uh, in January 2012, the Supreme State Attorney Office rejected all charges of human trafficking which bring the U.S. unit as it's pointless and it's not fulfilling the criteria for human trafficking and it was retake uh, the case from them because they didn't work according to law. However, uh, the court in Zlin uh, obtained already prepared documents uh, from, from the secret police and they issued internal arrest warrant against Yaroslav Dobesh and Barbara Plaskova for alleged multiple rapes which have been committed during the day, years 2004 in 2006. So as you can see, it's, it was made respectively back. Uh, so in 2012, they, they issued the arrest warrant for something in a past history. This was the first official warrant. Uh, the trial in the Czech Republic in 2014 was actually uh, very fast. Uh, it was under closed doors, so we don't know the procedure. However, it brings doubts about the fire, fire trail as uh, no witnesses uh, from the alleged victims were allowed to entrance. They were not presented. No defenders were invited. There was uh, only one witness in favor of Guru Yara and Barbara Plaskova and many more things and actually, I'm sorry, and appeal was made by the private lawyers because the ex offer lawyers didn't work very well and they didn't wish to make uh, the appeal, possibly. So um, the trial was make a sentence for 10 and nine and a half years uh, with the strict regime. It was not, uh, it never happened to be official because the appeal was made, and as we see further, it was abolished fully. But meanwhile, uh, in February 2015, started official cooperation of the Czech authorities with the Filipinos on the case of two fugitives. Um, on March 6, 2015, the embassy of the Czech Republic in Manila informed the Filipino authorities that Tobes and Plaskova are actually fugitives from the Czech Republic for multiple rapes. The unexpired passport of Barbara Pascova should be considered invalid and will be cancelled by the issuing authority, by the delivery. The passport of Yaroslav Tobes had expired already, so it's not possible to, to make it invalid. But uh, Yaroslav Tobes and Barbara Pascova are therefore undocumented aliens and their presence in the Philippines poses a risk to public interest. Therefore, on March 12, 2015, the Bureau of Immigration in the Philippines issued a summary deportation order against Tobes and Plaskova, and as her passport was invalid, on April 14, uh, 2015, Barbara Plaskova was arrested by immigration office because she had to prolong her visa stay. Um, the asylum intervention of the Czech Embassy in Manila happened on 5th May 2015 when the third consul of the Czech Embassy in Manila, Mr. Jakub Czerny, in a confidential letter addressed to Mr. Paras, Minister of Justice, argued that all statements of Barbara Plaskova in the asylum application are just purposeful 
to avoid her deportation, <coughs> originally planned on 8 or 12 July 2015, and he pleaded to quickly reject her application for asylum. As Barbara Plaskova argumented that all charges against her and Guruyara are just fabricated to destroy peaceful new religion movement, which actually prospered in the Czech Republic until 2008. And she brings all these points, which I mentioned before, about the trial, about the U.S. investigation and other things, but this doesn't help towards the claim of the Czech embassy. Then, on May 2015, they arrested uh, Jaroslav Dobesh and in his ashram, as you already know, and bring him in the immigration detention center in Manila. And this picture is very well known because it was widely published in all around the world. As the media already know, Jaroslav Dobesh only as a very bad person who just uh, violating law, despite the fact he was still innocent person. Anyway, in reaction to the asylum application of Jaroslav Dobesh, which he fulfilled just after his arrest, on May 21, the High Court in Olomouc ruled on appeal against the judgment of the Regional Court in Brno Zlin to cancel the verdict entirely <coughs> for enormous procedural errors, lack of evidence, since they doubt status fugitive and order proper rejudging all the case and to immediately inform both of them because until that point they even didn't know about the case in the Czech Republic in the trial. But uh, since then, the court in Zlin didn't actually act anything and they are just waiting and postponing this status which is leading to nowhere, basically. And uh, on June 10, 2015, there happened actually forcible deport attempt of Yaroslav Dobesh back to the Czech Republic via Turkish Airlines flight, as we know, because we obtain a uh, flight ticket for him issued um, by authorities in Prague <coughs> on the 4th June 2015. It was six days before the attempted deportation and actually it was during his pending asylum request. This incident is actually still unsolved and uh, even we try very, um, very hard to examine what happened from the side of the Czech authorities. We don't have an obtain any answer yet. These are actually one of the uncertain and unsolved questions also for the future because as I told you already there is no trial progress in the Czech Republic so far since May 2015 which is already two years and uh, Czech authorities deny any responsibility for the situation of two Czech citizens in detention and actually saying this is responsibility for Philippines, but it was their inter intervention which brings them into the detention. And uh, unfortunately, despite all many human rights activities, our movement activities, there is no um, investigation about um, possible human rights violation from the side Czech authorities or the misconduct um, for the past two years. So this is, I think, it's very important to focus on some key uh, human rights issue in this case, which is also uh, not only for this, our um, board leaders, but it's important also for others believers in the Czech Republic as well, and for other students in the world, and also for their families in the Philippines. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much uh, for this uh, invitation and uh, uh, this opportunity for me to, to share uh, our experience of a part of, of the whole uh, issue. Uh, first, uh, a few words about our organization, which has been created uh, about uh, 25 years ago. We are based in uh, Brussels. We develop a lot of uh, uh, advocacy uh, in the European institutions, uh, Council of Europe, 
uh, also the OSCE and the, the UN. We cover human rights around the world, in China, in North Korea, in Russia, in Ukraine, and also uh, in the EU. Uh, one of our focuses is uh, freedom of religion or belief, and I gave you uh, a copy of our recent report that uh, we will present at the European Parliament uh, uh, beginning uh, of June. But I would also say that in the framework of our fight for religious freedom, we have uh, recently uh, actively campaigned for a Czech citizen uh, that was in a prison in, uh, in Sudan, uh, Peter Jacek, and with the special envoy of the EU, uh, Jan Fiegel, as well as with uh, uh, a, Czech, <coughs> a Czech MEP uh, in uh, Brussels, uh, we put a lot of pressure uh, through our news, daily newsletter about freedom of religion on the Sudanese authorities. Fortunately, thanks to the visit of the Ministry of uh, uh, Foreign Affairs in, in Sudan and all that campaign organized not only by us but also by other human rights organizations in Europe and in America, Peter Jacek, who had been uh, sentenced to a heavy prison term, 12 years, 12 years for allegedly uh, being a spy and also financing a rebel uh, group. So he was uh, finally released and we announced that uh, on, on, that web, on our website. Another issue that we have uh, recently uh, intensively uh, dealt with is the misuse and abuse of international arrest warrants and uh, European arrest warrants. Uh, two months ago, we organized a conference at the European Parliament about uh, such an issue involving Romania and uh, UK, uh, a case, the case of a Romanian uh, citizen living in UK who had been uh, uh, on the list of wanted uh, people uh, by uh, Europol. So we organized a conference. Uh, there were, we also uh, contacted some MEPs who asked uh, read the parliamentary written questions. There was a supplement in the Parliament magazine of uh, eight pages. We worked with the organization Fair Trial in London. And th this, uh, this was already a follow-up of another uh, event that had taken place at the OSCE in Warsaw last year in September, October, where there had been uh, such a conference organized by fair trial uh, in, uh, in, in Warsaw. And suddenly we realized that uh, a number of governments were using and misusing Interpol and uh, uh, also uh, Europol for uh, political uh, purposes, just to uh, hunt their, the political opponents. And we have again a recent case uh, last uh, this week uh, one uh, in Moldova. But I will not go into the, the details of this <coughs> case, of course, just to tell you that when we were told about the case of uh, Yaroslav Dobes and uh, uh, Barbara uh, Plashkova, we were already in a territory that, uh, about which, which uh, we had uh, some uh, knowledge and we wanted to investigate uh, a little bit more on that side. So not on the persecution uh, and the problems that uh, they might have uh, in another context, but about uh, their, their uh, detention uh, in the Philippines. So last year in June, uh, I and the representative of another human rights organization based in Vienna went uh, to Manila. Uh, we uh, wanted to collect information about the situation of those two Czech citizens, but we also knew that there were other uh, EU citizens that were in the, the immigration detention center uh, Bagong uh, Diwa. So we wanted to collect more uh, info about that. And uh, so we tried to approach the commissioner of the Bureau of Immigration, which was not easy, but we managed it. And uh, he was uh, very co uh, cooperative and he welcomed our initiative and he even invited us a second time. Uh, to talk about the situation in Bagong Diwa and about the case of uh, those two Czech citizens. And uh, he said, you can visit uh, the detention center without any problem. I will ask the, the, the new warden, Mr. Erwin Otanes, uh, to come here to our office and you will go with him to the center. You will be able to talk to the Czech citizens, but to any citizens 
uh, to take pictures, to film if you want, to talk privately uh, with them. <laughs> so really, we, we welcome this uh, positive attitude at, the, at that time. But Mr. Uh, Mr. Ronaldo Geron uh, was to be replaced very soon, so we have not had uh, so other contacts with uh, the, the person who replaced him. So we visited the, the center. We met with Jaroslav Dobesh and Barbara Blaskova. Uh, we, we talked to them, we collected the, their, their testimonies, but we also visited the whole premise, all the premises and took pictures and uh, talked to quite a number of people. And we discovered at that time there were about 150 detainees. Uh, there were 19 members of the European uh, Union who were there for various reasons. And each case, each case of course, is uh, very specific. Uh, but there were, there were really strange uh, situations. Uh, because I remember uh, that uh, one of them it was an Irish uh, detainee uh, had been, uh, there, there had been an uh, arrest warrant against him because of an alleged cr uh, a crime that uh, uh, he had allegedly committed in uh, 2009 and then he had been cleared of all the, the charges. But he was still in that uh, center because he could not afford, he could not pay for a, for a ticket to fly back uh, to, to Ireland. There was also another case, I remember, I think it was a German uh, and uh, that guy, there were many people in their 60s uh, who were there in, in, in the center as prisoners. I mean, EU, EU members, huh? uh, EU uh, c citizens. And that guy was about 66, 67 at the time, and he had Alzheimer. He didn't remember why he was there uh, and what he was doing there. He was just living there as he had lived uh, uh, anywhere else. So they were really strange, uh, strange uh, cases. There were people from Austria, Bulgaria, Czechia, France, Germany, Great Britain, uh, as I said, Ireland, Italy, Poland, and Slovenia. But there were also many other people from other sides of the world, and I will not go, of course, into the, the, the details uh, of those uh, cases. But uh, <clears throat> what, what I wanted to say is that um, when people are accused of something in any country, and that uh, it is automatically recognized as uh, uh, legal by the country hosting such people uh, for which the, an arrest warrant uh, is, uh, is, uh, is requested, is, is, is asked to be uh, carried out. Uh, I, I think that there should be more investigation by uh, the authorities of the said country, and in this case, uh, by the Philippines. We have cases so of people now, those two Czech citizens, they have been there for two years and they are in a catch-22 uh, situation. Really, I don't see how that, uh, could, that, well, how that could be uh, solved. Uh, two years after the appeal court had said, uh, we cancel the whole uh, decision saying, okay, life, not life imprisonment, but imprisonment to nine and 10 years, uh, no new trial, nothing has happened. How long can that last? And can such people be kept, presumed innocent, of course, now, uh, be kept in, uh, in detention, deprived of their freedom, deprived of contacts with their family, with their children, in both cases? Uh, how, how can that be solved? I, I think that a provisional solution must be found, uh, at least by, by the, the Philippines. That's why we, want, we, were, we agreed to raise the, this issue in the framework of the, the UPR, of the Philippines, not to blame the Philippines or, or any country, it's, it's not our purpose, but to find a solution for these two Czech citizens, but maybe also for, for other citizens. Because the detention conditions, as everybody knows, uh, is not paradise uh, in, in Bagong Diwan. Uh, we were told uh, that it was worse in, uh, in other prisons, but anyway, it was not human conditions. The detention living space is really insufficient for those 150 people who were detained uh, at the time. Uh, they were really appalling in some, uh, in some parts of, of the premises. The food was of poor quality, insufficient quantity. There was a shop in the center where detainees could buy some more ingredients uh, if they had money uh, to complete their meager uh, rations. There were also several uh, kitchen facilities that Hindus, Chinese, Muslims could use in order to respect 
their religious or cultural uh, traditions, there were attempts to make their life a, a little bit better in the framework of what was uh, possible. There were also some equipment for physical exercise, but uh, those people were staying there uh, all the time. Uh, also, it was already stressed before, there is no medical assistance. But not only in the immigration detention center, but I was told also in all detention uh, facilities uh, in, the, in the Philippines. While we were there, uh, the, the detainees were really happy that a delegation had come from outside uh, to, to investigate their situation and, and try to improve their conditions. So in the framework of our visit, we, we also went to some uh, embassies of EU member states. Uh, we were welcomed, immediately welcomed by the Austrian embassy saying, OK, uh, I, want to, I, said, I want to meet the ambassador. When do you want to meet? Okay, if tomorrow will be fine. Okay, it's not fine, 10 o'clock tomorrow, that's fine, perfect. So we had that conversation without any problem. We went to the French embassy, the same. We tried with the Czech embassy, the ambassador was uh, absent. So, okay, that's fine. Uh, we tried to get a, a, a meeting with the, the, the consul. Uh, we sent emails before <coughs> traveling already. We called, we went there, physically we were present and every time we were denied any opportunity to meet him, with, which really uh, I, found, I, I found a pity. So, uh, those two Czech citizens uh, are presumed innocent. I think that's what we, we must keep uh, in mind. And I call upon the, the, the Filipino authorities to try to find a solution uh, to that uh, situation. Uh, one possible solution that I had in mind would be to issued temporary identification documents to Yaroslav Dobes and Barbara uh, Plashkova and to release them from Bagong Diwa. Of course, I know that uh, the, the authorities don't want them to run away, uh, to use that opportunity to disappear. Uh, and so to release them on condition, uh, bail, uh, but also condition to regularly report to the local police, maybe every day, why not? Uh, because it also cost uh, the, the Filipino community to have such people in prison, not only those two Czech citizens, but, but also others. Uh, and those specific cases, I don't know the details, but I'm sure there are a similar uh, situation. <coughs> and so, uh, and to keep them in that situation of uh, limited uh, freedom under police uh, surveillance until there is a new trial uh, with another decision, I don't know which one, uh, in the Czech Republic and then to adapt for the Filipino authorities to adapt their response to the Czech authorities after the final uh, decision in, in a court in, in the Czech Republic. Uh, I would just like uh, to show some pictures of inside uh, the, the detention facility and to comment very, very briefly. Um, yes, I think, yeah. Okay, that's, that's uh, the entrance. Uh, of the facility uh, of uh, Bagong uh, Diwa. Uh, it's in the middle of uh, a police headquarters uh, where there are about 2,000 uh, officers uh, in surrounding uh, blocks. Uh, yes, next one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that, that was uh, the new head of uh, the, the detention center. We had really a very good, a very humane contact uh, uh, with him and he, he he hoped that we could solve some problems of very specific uh, prisoners that were there inside the, 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 the detention, immigration detention uh, center. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's how it looks like once you, you are uh, inside. Yeah. Uh, so I could talk to some uh, Americans uh, who were there. Next one. Yeah, those, you know, they stay together. Americans stay together, the Indians stay together, the Koreans stay together because of communication. Uh, yeah, so very dirty places for bathrooms uh, and uh, lack of hygiene in general. Next one. Yeah, so you see how it looks like inside. Not funny when you stay in such conditions, conditions not only for months but for years. Yeah, I was speaking with the Hindus there. 
So, okay, you see how dirty the kitchen is. Uh, so they have some facilities to have their own uh, kitchen uh, corner. Uh, if they don't want pork, if they want this or that, if they are vegetarian. And so there, there are really some efforts uh, in, in the framework of what is uh, administratively and financially uh, possible. Yeah. Okay, so other detainees. Uh, yeah. Okay, you can just show, yeah, you see uh, how mm -hmm. dirty it is, uh, lack of hygiene in general. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, Chinese. Yeah, go on. So this one is, uh, okay, training uh, physically. <clears throat> but there's not much to do inside, you know. I tasted the food. That guy said, oh, I've been here for 10 years. I don't know if it's true, <laughs> and I don't know what for. And just saying, uh, repeating wh wh what he told me. Yeah, and he showed the paper, yes. And, and then uh, I had a room uh, where I could meet anybody, uh, listen to anybody, uh, <coughs> note uh, their, their, what they thought of the detention conditions. They were very pleased with the new head of the of the prison uh, because uh, before him there had been a lot of problems and I will not go into those details, it's not necessary. So we collected their testimonies and tried to see what to do and that's why afterwards we went to several uh, embassies of uh, EU member states uh, in, uh, in Manila. Yes. Yeah. Okay, Barbara uh, Plaskova and Jaroslav uh, Dobes, uh, yes. Yeah. And so the final, final picture, you see Barbara Plaskova the, on the right side and uh, Jaroslav Dobesh. And really, we, 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 we send our congratulations to the Commission of the Immigration Bureau about uh, the, new, the new head of the prison because the, the detainees also liked him uh, very, very much. He was re really humane uh, with them. That's it. And so we, yes, we said bye-bye. Yeah, this okay. is the final. Next one. This, this was the final. final. Okay, so that's what I wanted to share with you, and please try to find a solution <laughs> for those two, and maybe for others uh, as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Fostre. It was very clear, and I think you, you said everything. That, that should be known about this situation. So uh, now I will leave the floor to you if you have some questions. I appreciate the report that was given by Mr. Willy uh, Patrick. Yes. Thank you. Anyway, <laughs> about the compound diva. And it's, uh, it's uh, an eye-opener because that's also one thing that we can probably do with the Commission on Human Rights because it's a part of our mandate to conduct jail visitations. Mm -hmm. And it involves not only Filipino citizens, but everyone who are in the Philippines. So we can check on uh, their situation more. May, may, when I go back, I would um, indeed recommend that our visitation, visitorial uh, team will go and check on the Kabung Diwa. And if you could share with us maybe the, the, the findings that you've already got yeah. in terms of every individual prisoner that oh, yeah. how, I mean detention uh, uh, person there uh, what research have you done according to each and every case that mm -hmm. they uh, are actually facing as for the case of uh, Haros Love and Barbara our, our visitorial uh, team visited them and indeed um, did even a clinical check up on them. I don't know if it was already shared by Martin to you. Yeah, yeah, I yes. told them, and, and we very uh, appreciate it. You did? Uh, and apparently they are in good, uh, good as can be physical condition. And I talked also to the lawyer that is handling the case, uh, attorney Jess. Yeah. And um, he said <coughs> that uh, there is still a pending appeal uh, for a stay of execution and um, what was that? but it was still it's still with the office of the president yes. and it has not been acted upon so um, maybe well I could also do that but I get home with 
uh, follow up with the Office of the President as to what action are they going to take on the matter. Mm -hmm. And the more important uh, thing point there is uh, what uh, Cecile said about the son, the separation of the mm -hmm. son, uh, the mother and the child. I think that is, you know, as you said, an infringement on the right of uh, Barbara and the child. Barbara and the child. So we will also look into the situation, and uh, we will uh, inform Martin of whatever findings we have. So, so far, that is just what we have done. And, uh, but I can assure you that we are constantly monitoring the case. And uh, as I said, again, we have already reached out to, the, to both of them. And we know what they are, the situation uh, is. But at least, as uh, Mr. Willie Fortrea said, that uh, the, the new head is uh, very humane in his approach mm -hmm. to dealing with detention prisoners. So I think that's one thing uh, that is good there. And we will reach out to him and continuously uh, communicate or engage mm -hmm. him when it comes to the case of uh, the two Czech uh, you know, citizens. Maybe then we can also communicate with the Czech Republic and ask for an update, an embassy of the Czech mm -hmm. uh, in the Philippines, an update of the cases against them. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah. No other question? No other question? Yes? I'd like to ask you, uh, why do you think the Czech Embassy is blocking the communication, yours or other uh, delegations, uh, with, with Mr. Dobesh and Barbara Pakko? Yes, so when I was there in June of last year, I must say that I, I was welcome at uh, a few EU embassies, and uh, it was not the case uh, with the Czech consulate. Uh, I don't know why. Have you ever seen this somewhere around the world? Yes, that has happened. Yes, of course. It's not, yeah, it's not unusual. Uh, we were not uh, trying to, to meet uh, someone at the Czech uh, uh, embassy or uh, consulate uh, uh, to, to be destructive and uh, uselessly uh, critical. We just wanted to, to expose uh, our perception of the facts and, uh, and to know more about uh, their own perception of the situation. But what is really worrying is that they've been there for two years. They've been, okay, the, 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 the condemnation has been, the sentence has been nullified and there is no new step. How, how long would it start, uh, how, how long would it last like that? One, two, three, five years? Uh, we know of many other uh, trials that took uh, several years, and then they are kept in such conditions without uh, formal, uh, <coughs> a formal and final sentence. So, thank you for all of you, for your questions. Thank you for all this panel. It was very touching. Thank you also for organizing it, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. So thank you for everybody. <clears throat> thank you very much.